Hampton Court, one of the great royal palaces of the Tudor period, and the place where Catherine Parr married Henry Tudor, becoming his sixth wife. Eighteen months previously, Henry's fifth wife, the 17-year-old Catherine Howard, had gone to the block. She had committed adultery, and as queen, that was deemed to be treason. It was only a decade before that Henry had broken with the Catholic Church. The ancient monasteries had been destroyed and a way of life with them. But the new church was in its infancy, and with Cromwell, who had driven many of the reforms now executed, Henry seemed to be leaning back towards conservatism in his old age. As a consequence of all this, the country was in a state of instability, with religious laws constantly being changed, leading to much confusion and dangerously polarised factions at court. And Henry wanted a new wife, not a role many women would relish given his history. 31-year-old, twice-widowed Catherine Parr was one of the women he had his eye on. Her family belonged to the religious reform faction at court, but she had been married to a conservative northern lord for many years, and it is likely that she was assumed to have shared her husband's beliefs. The king wanted a wife who wasn't going to court controversy, and Catherine Parr seemed to fit the bill. But she was at best ambivalent, and understandably so. So would she be forced to marry the king? It only begins to dawn on her now that the king will take her for a wife and she will not have any choice in the matter. All these men, the king, her brother, Hartford, have sealed her fate. She is no more free than she was as a girl. But Catherine Parr was in love with another man. Thomas Seymour, a dashing courtier whose family had been elevated when his sister Jane married the king, was the love match she may well have had in mind when Henry set his sights on her. Henry, though, was a man who got what he wanted, whatever the cost, and so Seymour was sent off on ambassadorial duties to the Low Countries, and Catherine's destiny was unavoidable. She would be Henry's last wife. She thinks of those great paws prodding at her, and his stench, and the terror he ignites, and being tied to him forever by marriage, and the desperate duty of producing an heir at her age, each month hoping, praying she will not bleed. It is a whore's job, this business of being a woman. Henry himself was well into his 50s and was not a well man. There are various theories about what he suffered from and most historians agree now that it was not syphilis. A more plausible explanation of his symptoms, excessive weight gain, erratic mood swings, ulcerating wounds that wouldn't heal, is that he suffered from type 2 diabetes. Though Henry had a son with Jane Seymour, in those days many children did not survive until adulthood. So in the king's mind, a single son was not enough. And there was the treachery of a court that had seen families like the Seymours raised up by dangling a beautiful female relative in front of the susceptible king. What will become of Catherine in this marriage? And what about her love for Thomas Seymour, 